Yeah, so the Polaric study is a very interesting study because it's asking this question that we've been trying to ask for a long time, can we beat our CHOP in the frontline treatment of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma? And uh, many studies have tried but failed, and our CHOP has really reigned supreme as the king of chemotherapy in that indication. Uh, now, Polaric was asking quite a simple question, so it's a randomized, one-to-one uh, -one randomization of our CHOP versus our CHUP, so omitting the vincristine but replacing it with polatizumab vedotin uh, which is an antibody drug conjugate against CD79B. Six cycles, um, and it's for um, the higher IPI, so IPI2 plus patients, so higher risk of fuse large B-cell lymphoma. And the bottom line is that the primary endpoint, which was progression-free survival, which is investigator assessed, uh, was met. Uh, so there was a two-year PFS. There was a just under 7% absolute uh, increase in the two-year PFS, and that corresponds to a 27% reduction in relapse rate. Now that was highly statistically significant. The result we all wanted to see was overall survival, but there wasn't an overall survival on this initial uh, analysis. Now it's only 28 months follow-up, so you know one reason we haven't seen an overall survival benefit emerge may well be that we just haven't followed patients up long enough, so I think we wait to see. The study wasn't powered for overall survival as well, so you know it's powered for PFS. However, what we do see is a reduction in the use of second-line treatments, so CAR T-cell therapy, autologous stem cell transplant, radiotherapy. So I think it is a real reduction we're seeing. And very important is the safety aspects. And what we saw is that they're essentially the same in terms of uh, safety. There was a slight excess of febrile neutropenia with the polar r chip arm. Um, but otherwise, it was actually very similar. And that's perhaps not a surprise because you omit the vincristine, which is a tubulin toxin, and you replace it with polatizumab, which is also a tubulin toxin. So you're, in terms of safety anyway, replacing like with like. Uh, so I think that is very encouraging data. Um, you know, I have to ask the self my question, if I had diffuse large B, um, IPI3, let's say, you know, would I want to have polar r chip? And I think the answer has to be yes, I would. You know, I would want the thing that gives me the highest cure rate. Uh, one of the things that's generating a lot of discussion, though, is the subgroup analysis. So are there groups we can identify who benefit more from polar R chip? And we have seen subgroup analysis, but of course, you know, they're not powered and you have to interpret them very carefully. Uh, but the IPI3 plus uh, seem to particularly benefit maybe. So I wonder that as we look to licensing and reimbursement, whether that might be the group that's particularly uh, targeted.